background, we are CAD 2 students, and we are going to be presenting on the future of math courses. My name is Ian Anderson. I'm Mark Burleton. <coughs> and I'm Terrence Washington. Uh, right now, it looks like the future of math courses are going completely online. With flex degrees, massive open online courses, and just general online courses. And the questions we need to ask ourselves is, how do we keep the integrity of the both the course and the quizzes and tests and what can we do to improve the quality, improve the experience of these courses for the students? Claire? <laughs> <laughs> um, our purpose today is to look at the online computational engines such as Book Mapa, as well as, as well as many graphing calculators and how they have the ability to both help and hinder a students' um, understanding of higher level concepts. There are three things that we're going to touch on today. One is how computational engines like Wolfram Alpha are helpful. Another is how they fail. And third is how professors can phrase problems in order to avoid students cheating using programs like this. First, I'm going to talk about why computational engines such as Wolfram Alpha and your cousin can be useful. They're faster, more efficient, <laughs> and they're great for visual aids. Um, one example I have is when students are learning about rhyme and sum, a little background, um, you take the area of these rectangles and add them up to find the area under the curve. And that can be a little abstract for students to understand when somebody just tells them that. So it's a great tool for professors to just type that into Wolfram Alpha and have them show this picture instead of wasting time in class to draw this all out by hand because there's a lot to draw, obviously. And then it's very clear to see that these rectangles, the area does add up to the area under the curve. And then Wolfram Alpha also shows you, um, gives you some text, and that's also good for different learning techniques. Some people might like to see it in words like that. Also, when you're doing Rhyme and Sums, there's different ways to approach it. You can approach the rectangles from the right side, the middle, or the left side. And this is also just a way where professors can just type this in and then show really quickly how they would be using that instead of just saying, I'm going to use it from the right or the left. Um, so these are great visual aids for students to have. Pattern recognition is also something that's very useful. Um, we'll come up with very useful. You can, like, let's look at the graph x to a power. For example, x to the even power is a U shape like this, and x to an odd power is a curve like this. So you can tell a student that but they might not necessarily believe you right off the bat. So you can type into Wolfram Alpha really quick a higher number, like x to the 10, and you can see that, yes, it is still a U-shape, and x to the other, and yes, it is still this pattern. But Wolfram Alpha does fail, I found, when you're doing pattern recognition if you go too high. So x to the 2012 and x to the 2015, these are still the same general shape, but as you can see, there's such a sharp curve that it wouldn't pass the vertical line test. So that's actually not an accurate graph. So that is, if you go too high on Wolfram Alpha, it's, it doesn't work anymore. And then leading into that, I'm going to talk about how computational engines fail. Um, basically, technology does not have a brain. Unless you have a brain. The <laughs> human brain has the ability to recognize patterns as well as understand concepts intuitively, which computational engines like Wolfram Alpha as well as graphing calculators are incapable of doing. Um, Wolfram Alpha seems to work in a sequential manner that due to the lack of pattern recognition is unable to skip steps that a human would be able to recognize intuitively. Um, in Wolfram Alpha and graphing calculators can hinder a student's deeper understanding of problem solving by providing the answers and sometimes the solutions, which these particular integrated integrals here were on the, the uh, um, integrator of the year competition, and the, if you do put them into Wolfram Alpha, they do provide an answer. And for most things that you put into Wolfram Alpha, it, it can also provide a solution, like the step by step solution as to how to get to the answer. However, these ones it does not provide the solution. So if you do not have the skills or the know how to be able to solve <coughs> the integrals um, by hand, uh, then it's kind of a waste of time to use Wolfram Alpha. And 
this this example here is one of that was on the 3D screen. This is one from from the integrator of the that actually I saw. <laughs> <laughs> Another way we found to help promote a student's understanding and at the same time provide test uh, integrity of the test is examples that I've taken from the infinite series of equations. Now this can be a very complicated concept for a student to understand. Basically, if you plug a problem in like this, you're looking for it to either converge or diverge. Converge means if you add all the pieces together, they come to a number. Diverge means if you add them all together, they come to infinity. So if you plug a problem in Wolfram Alpha uh, basically like this, it can tell you whether the series converges or diverges, only if the problem is given specifically. What we've done is we've taken the specifics out of the problem and made it abstracted. We've abstracted the problem. So instead of using the specifics of an equation, we sub A of N in there. You can't put this inside of a computer and get an answer. The only way you're going to do this is by using your head and using your intellectual ability. Of, uh, another thing that this does is provides confidence in a student. Once they're able to solve something like this, the gratification is enormous. And they can take this information going forward and they'll be stronger in their tests that they take as they go forward. In conclusion, we looked for where the computational engines failed, and we questioned their flaws. Although they can be useful in some situations, we have found ways to give questions that the human brain is needed to strategize solutions. The problems we have discovered are abstract, and these potential flaws can leave students at a disadvantage if they rely too heavily on Wolfram Alpha and calculators computing power, and not on their own intellectual skill. Finally, there are no resources out there that educators can use to find integrals 
that cannot be solved using Wolfram Alpha, and we are very proud of our discovery of this class of function, as well as bringing this conversation to life.